This episode of Who Chose is brought to you by Brilliant. Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm going to be releasing this. This is the new 36 hole NFT hydroponic system available for just $120 on Hydroland. Today I'm gonna to show you all of the components and how to set this hydroponic system up so that you can grow your own salads and leafy greens at home. So we've covered NFTs a lot on this channel and it's well and good for me to show you how to build a DIY NFT hydroponic system like this. However, a lot of people don't have the tools or the skills to piece together a system, let alone the space that this larger style of NFT requires. So our aim was to source a system that was both easy to assemble and really cheap. Now this is actually one of two systems that are on the store at the moment. Uh, this is the smaller system and I want to try this one out first. I think this one's going to be accessible to more people because it's smaller, cheaper and can fit into more people's houses. In the first box we have NFT channel, proper NFT channel. So at each end we have an end cap with a pipe hole. We have the top cap and the channel itself. This top cap actually comes off completely for cleaning and internally you can see there that we have ridges. So those ridges are going to help spread the film across our channel. There's four channels and that is box one. Okay, so box two, we have a box in a box, some foam seed starters and we have all of the pipe components. Okay, so in your kit, you're going to have one set of pipes that has a little pipe on it like that. And this pipe is the feeder pipe. We're just gonna push that in together like so. And that is going to attach to our channels when we put the whole system together. The second pipe, that is going to have our return pipe on it. So our return pipe is going to look like this and it's gonna go down into our system. And we've got all the net cups that we need. We're also gonna have four legs. Now, the legs in this system serve a dual purpose. They're gonna block off the bottom of our pipe connections, as well as act as legs for the system. So we just push all of these pipe legs in. This system actually uses the NFT rails as part of the structure of the system. And that's how we were able to do this system so cheap, is because we weren't having to ship an entire structure with the NFT system. We can just press our piping into our system. And if you actually have a look at this NFT channel, the internal of the channel is actually a different profile to the external of the channel. And that's because this is actually not a single piece of plastic. There is a lot of strength uh, in this channel. And that is going to hold a lot of weight when you get a system full of plants. Just push these into place, like so. And they're holding themselves up. And we can do the same with the other end. So we'll lay that down flat, and we're just gonna flip this. It'll be easier if you've got it on the ground. Like this. <laughs> Slot all of these ends into our pipes. And we can just push that down, like so. There we go. Just make sure your channels are flat. There it is. All right, I think that took me about 10 minutes and I was filming at the same time. That is super fast to put together. There it is. That is actually quite sturdy. I'm quite, I'm quite impressed with that. <laughs> so this table also comes with wheels. And these wheels are how we're going to get the slope on the system. But we've got our reservoir here, right? and it's going to run down into the reservoir. So we need the whole system to slope down that way. And the way we do that is using these casters. So these actually screw into a screw point on the base, tighten those up. That's going to give us some fall on the system. 
And if you're having trouble uh, getting this pipe to fit into the catchment, just make sure that the pipe's not on this way. It'll make the return too short for the container. So just make sure the short end is connected and it should just drop in like so. Okay, so within our box, uh, we also have thread tape for a BSP threaded ball valve and a hose which will lead back down to our pump. We have the world's smallest DC brushless pump. Uh, now, this is gonna work absolutely fine. These small DC pumps are fantastic. They're low voltage, which is good. And we have a 12 volt DC 240 volt adapter. Now, what this means is that this pump is able to be run from a 12 volt system. So you don't need this adapter if you're running it off grid, which we're going to do very shortly. So this pump connects up to our piping. It's just a push fit. And this piping, we're going to thread tape and we have a connection here, which fits up into our rail system. We're going to thread tape our BSP adapter onto our pipe like so. And that is going to push up into the feeders for our NFT rails like so. This can then drop down. Now you can cut out a hole for the pump if you like. If you are pedantic about the lid not being sealed, uh, just drop a hole through with a step drill bit. This will be absolutely fine the way it is though. This is a rather small container, so I would recommend attaching a float valve to this container and a reservoir. Okay, so everything I do from here on in is optional, but it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So all these parts are available separately on the Hydroland website. We're going to punch a hole in the side of our reservoir with a Christmas tree bit and insert a float valve, which is going to keep the level of our system at about here. To that, I'm gonna add a quick connect nipple and that's going to allow us to keep topping up this reservoir from a larger reservoir. So I'm gonna take this outside and set it up in my greenhouse where I would like to grow my plants. So our priority for the design of this system was that it was affordable and it works well. Shipping was a major consideration. This obviously leaves some caveats. It's quite short. I'm a tall person and I don't particularly want to be bending over to access my plants. I want them to be at what I consider a workable height because that is one of the benefits of hydroponics you're not doing your back end. With that consideration in mind, I designed these. These are 3D printable leg extensions and I will make the STL file available on the product page free of charge. It's just a Google Drive link that you can download these files with because the pipe sizes aren't standard pipe sizes that you're used to having in Australia. And it's much cheaper just to print these off. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can take the pipes into your local hardware store and try your luck, and you might be able to get pipe sizes that are longer. The way that these work, use the existing leg as the top section, and we just pull out. You can remove the bungs in the ends, and we put on as many extension pieces as we want to add onto our system, like so. And then you can just replace the bungs in the end and that gives you the casters if you want to have casters on a system that slants as well and i've added in smaller 3d print files to give the slope that's required so that you can have the cart the four casters as well as uh, the slope that's required rather than just having casters at one end so we'll just push these together and then replace our bung at the end and now we have longer legs and we can extend our return pipe as well. Now, just remember that a pump's head is measured from the height of the, the pump. So by lowering this pump, we're actually reducing the flow rate on the system. Uh, so if you raise this system up too high, rather than adding in extra pieces of pipe to return down, just raise the reservoir up to its original height. and the pump will function 
the way it's meant to. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna raise this reservoir up. If you do want to raise the system up, but keep the reservoir on the ground, you can upgrade the pump to these. This is the KL41805, and this is the pump and power supply that we have as spare parts for the vertical tower hydroponic system. It is an 18 watt, 12 volt pump that will increase the head height from this high to about this high. It also comes with a timer and will allow you to adjust the power of the pump at the wall so that you can increase and reduce the flow rate if the flow rate isn't high enough for the height that you have the system. And by putting a cinder block just underneath the reservoir, we've got our reservoir back up to the height that we want it. Drop the pump into our reservoir like so and we can connect it up to our external reservoir that's going to top this smaller reservoir up. Luckily for me, I have this very large IBC, uh, which is pumping to all of my other NFT rails. And as you can see, they're all got taps on them and the pump runs from down in the reservoir, as you can see there. So there's an extra line at the base of this channel, which I'm gonna to run to this NFT. And it's just going to clip onto the float valve that we installed earlier, like so. And I can turn that on, like so. And that will start to fill our reservoir up. While that's filling, I just wanna show you another option, because you know, if you're buying this, you probably don't have that large setup behind me. If you have the reservoir on the ground, now it's important to have it on the ground because you want to refill it uh, and you want, don't want to lose like half the height of this. This is a 200 litre poly tank. And the reason I want to show you this is uh, because I reckon this is going to be the way to go for a lot of people. This is the Hydroland 200 litre squat water tank. Now you can probably see where I'm going with this. If you raise this up, enough um, and obviously you don't need a 3d printer you can use cinder blocks or whatever you like to raise this system you can have this system draining directly into a large reservoir if that's a direction that you want to go that is something that i could definitely recommend because the larger the reservoir you have well the cooler the water is going to be the longer between nutrient changes and there's just a bunch of reasons why this is a great idea. Obviously, it raises the price a little bit, but this is an add-on accessory that you can just add on after you've got the system set up and going, and then you just start raising the system. Later down the track, if you so feel, you can add one of these in. And using this pump in combination with the power supply that's with it will allow you to, to raise the system and use it above these 200 litre reservoirs and you don't actually need to have this underneath the system either. If this is on the ground, you can run a hose from the base of this water tank and connect it to the ball valve, which is installed at the front and run a quick connect adapter to your smaller reservoir and it will fill up the reservoir as the plants use the nutrient. All right, well, let's have a look and see how this system runs. So now I'm just gonna plug the pump in and I'll remove these covers so you can see it as I turn it on. So ready, set, here we go. Fantastic. And you just level out your channels. And as you can see, we have a nutrient film in all of our channels. And as we put our plants in that nutrient film will spread to all of the other channels as well. And the flow rate's adjustable with your tap here. So I will actually point out one problem with this system. For me, this hole spacing, it's, it's too dense. You're gonna want uh, a plant in every second hole, essentially. So let's get some plants and I'll show you how to plant this NFT system out. So the way that I raise my plants is in an indoor shelving lighting system. I've got DIY versions of this, but this is the Sun's Shelf, which I did a review on, it's really good. I use 
These are my 3D printable wicking propagation system. So it's a 3D printable base with a wick, which wicks up into our plant cells. It gives a really nice result. Like out of two of these planters, I'll get like a full NFT. So we're gonna plant these into our NFT. And to block the holes we're not gonna be using, I've designed these. These are just 3D printable caps. And these caps just fit straight over the holes on our system to block out the light. These are optional. And once the plants get to a certain size, they'll block out the light anyway. And we wanted to give you a foundation that you can build upon so that you can tailor it to your style of hydroponic gardening. Just like Brilliant is a way that you can build your critical thinking and problem solving skills. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant is a learning app designed to be uniquely effective. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you interact meaningfully with concepts, which is much more effective than watching lecture videos. It's a perfect mix of engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement, which keeps you motivated and on track. All content on Brilliant is curated by a team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from major universities like Stanford, MIT, Caltech, and more. Brilliant helps you develop your critical thinking skills through problem solving and not just memorization. So when you're building your knowledge on real world concepts and specific topics, you'll also be coming a better thinker. I personally love Brilliant science courses, which help you understand things all the way from simple machines through to electrical circuits and the physics of black holes. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash hucho, scan the QR code on screen, or visit the link in the description, and also get 20% off an annual subscription. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hucho's. All of this equipment is available on the Hydroland website. Happy hydroponicking, and I will see you next time on who chose.